All right. Howdy, everyone. Um, I am going to be recording a tutorial real quick on generally building, mapping, getting things ready to export from Blender for Substance Painter and eventually for Unreal Engine. Uh, tonight, we're going to be starting with a couple of signs. So here we have my um, default cube, as it were. Uh, you can see I've changed my load screen a little bit to cater to um, to cater to rolling stock. So I've got attachment points, I've got animations, I've got a high level level of detail, and I've got a scene where I normally keep my trucks and everything. We're not going to use any of those for signs, so we'll start by just deleting everything. Um, and we'll get a new cube again. The constant quandary of why does everyone delete the cube and then immediately add a cube again. In my case, I wanted to delete my attachment points and my animations. I don't need those for a sign. Um, and so to do that, we're going to go to the diagrams folder, look up sign. Um, signs one is what I'm going to be starting with. And here we have our diagram. So we've got a few signs here. We've got a old fashioned railroad crossing, yard limit, stop, slow, station signs, distance signs, depot signs down here, a trespassing sign. I chose this first because the station signs especially are going to be the most useful thing in Railroads Online at the moment. Um, because that's what I'm creating for right now. So, how do we make sure this is scale? We've got these measurements. And we want to take the tallest thing that is to scale, which is going to be the railroad crossing sign. And we want to make sure it's to scale. So the highest dimension is going to be the overall height of the post and that says 16 feet and the overall width it says is 10 inches so we'll add a cube and we'll set it to 10 feet high since that's our minor dimension and then we'll set it to 16 feet high and then um, and uh, Let's move this. Let's move this over to the materials for right now because that way it won't get blocked by as many things. So that you can see what I'm doing. This is Z. Um, I will have pressed a few other things already. Um, S for scale. That sort of thing. Um, I want to make sure you can see my keystrokes because a lot of people really really seriously rely on keystrokes when they're using blender i don't quite as much oh and we also want to move this cube into our ats that won't stay at that'll be our railroad crossing sign because i'm going to put all these in one file there's no point having separate blend files for all of this i'll probably put them on one texture too um <clears throat> we'll want a station sign and this will be one line because there's different specs for uh no there's not different specs it's just illustrating what it looks like with a flag in it I guess as well as the different um, the different requirements because that'll be 6, 12, 14, 16, 18, 6, 12, 18, yeah. Um, so we have got our station sign. Um, we'll also want our yard limit. And we'll start with the slow board. And then we'll also add a few new collections. I'm going to be putting one sign in each collection so that I can export them one at a time really easily. Of 
crossing 2,000 feet. Uh, I'll probably also make versions of the station and junction signs that are 2,000 feet because a mile on the current railroads online map is like three quarters of a map. That's kind of useless. I'll actually make it 1,000 feet even. But I'm going to keep the prototype versions um, because if I make these, put them into trains, or once we get a 16 kilometer on a side map, the one mile version will be a lot more useful. I'll also make a crossing 500 feet. Those are all the same sign. The difference is going to be where they are on the texture so that the text is individualized um, and then we'll put a trespass and then we'll put um, that sign length is going to depend on the size of the station and we don't have passenger stations yet anyway so I'm not, not going to worry about those yet um, but that lays out everything as far as our folders are concerned. So we'll go back to the railroad crossing or railway crossing. I'm using that to differentiate between because I later this evening will be making some actual traditional cross bucks as opposed to this weird thing. Um, I'll probably actually be making three because one of the other diagram sheets has a metal crossing as well. So we'll line that up. And it's not perfectly to scale. Here's the thing. That doesn't actually matter as long as we have our dimensions. <laughs> we are working off the dimensions, not off the visuals, but it's nice personally to have the visuals present. Um, and this is also not perfectly, R of course for rotate, there we go, that looks a lot more reasonable, it also makes it look a little bit more to scale, um, so this 16 feet is not evenly divided. We want our XZ plane, or our XY plane rather, to be our uh, our ground level. So it's four foot six below the ground. Our center point it is six feet up. So we're going to put it one and a half feet up, or three and a half feet up rather, because it's not six feet. It's eight feet. I went to school for engineering, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, so what is our dimension here on the highway sign? We're only given one dimension on this, and it says um, it says six inches on that side, and. doesn't seem to specify a width. This is shown at being the same size and it's the only width shown. Oh, nope, there's another one that also says 10 inches. So I'm going to assume it's 10 inches wide by six inches thick. So we'll give this five inches. We'll give this five inches. If you're ever having trouble finding a face, circle select is your friend. So that gives us our width and then we're going to set negative three inches and positive three inches. And oh, um, right. 
So one thing I'm going to change right now before I go any further is I am going to orient this drawing correctly. Um, so I've changed to my 3D cursor for my pivot point and my 3D cursor is still at the origin and I'm just gonna yeet and then I'm gonna apply the scale or apply the rotation on this so that I don't have to live with the consequences of my actions something you should never never have to do in blender consequences are for people who don't know enough to avoid them I guess um, so I've cut a center peak using the knife tool there and does it actually that's incorrect that's that's for if I was making for example a um, a mile post instead we just want to knife a single peak rather than a complete point and we'll put it right in the middle and then we'll drag the sides down I'm trying to see if they specify anywhere how far to drag it down um number seven nope doesn't say anything so for now just looking quickly that looks a little bit more than half so we'll give it um, we'll give it three and a quarter inches and so next thing is to cut the slot that the railway crossing sign is going to sit in so we're gonna add another cube we um, will probably snap the 3d cursor to here so that the cube appears where we want it um, because everything always shows up on the 3d cursor and that's kind of blocking everything the only dimension I can see is one and three quarters inches so we'll make it one and three quarters inches um, and then we'll make this this is just the cutout so it doesn't have to be a precise width um, and the top doesn't have to be a precise height but the bottom does so does it say how low it is yes it does because 6 and 12 is 18 so we'll go down a foot and a half I apologize for any anyone watching this from a metric country um, we just know the imperial system because that's what we grew up with um, I understand that base 12 <laughs> is not something that comes naturally to anyone um, and we'll delete this because you won't be able to see oh, delete the face because you won't be able to see that face in a game if you were printing you would want to leave that face there that's one of the major differences between modeling for a game and modeling to print. Um, so then we'll make this five feet and this five feet. And we'll bring this down to that face we just cut. And we'll bring this six inches down below the point. So that's half a foot. Um, you can, if you want to, uh, alter it. Where is it? I skipped over it. You can alter it to be in inches if you want. Um, but typically when you're working in feet and inches like this, I like to work in feet. Um, it, for some reason, it's easier for me to divide by 12 than multiply by 12. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> okay so now we've got the basic sign here uh, all we need to make it look like I put in any amount of effort is we need these uh, 
these two bolts here. So over here it says it's a 5 8 inch bolt. So we're going to um, we're going to snap the 3D cursor to the center of this board. And we're going to start with the 5 8 inch bolt. So you're going to want to put in 5 16 because 5 8 is the diameter. Um, and the overall thickness is 6 inches. Um, so realistically, the bolt shaft would be probably around 7. Um, I'm going to do a quarter inch because we don't model what we can't see. So then we rotate it 90 degrees to get it looking perfect. Uh, and you'll notice it looks a little bit small. Details like bolts are often over exaggerated on drawings so that you can see that they're there. Um, so. Um. One of the streamers I watched at one point was explaining the nature of Dark Souls 1 and said, you aren't, uh, you have to learn that what you see is not reality. Reality is a, an invisible, you know, sort of thing that sits beneath the surface. And, uh, modeling, <clears throat> I mean, modeling is literally that. Because that's what video games are. And you make... In order to make video games, you have to make models. Unless you're doing like a 2D game. Um, but that gives us our thing. So... Um, I didn't follow a hard size for the bolt head and the nut on this. I just went with an inch and an eighth. Because that looks really nice. Um, a rule of thumb is that when you're doing bolt heads, everything is always measured by um, by the actual thickness of it as it goes through the part. Because that's what matters mechanically. Um, and so... What you're going to be measuring for the bolt head is something that's going to be not as important for it to be to be easy. Um, and also, frequently, you're going to be measuring something that has to be related to a circle. And so, um, it's always some weird wacko amount separated from the, uh, the diameter of the bolt. Um, I want to say when I, uh, when I do stuff with hex bolts, it's a pretty even, easy rule to do, I think, seven sixth of the diameter for a hex bolt. Don't quote me on that. Um, look up the values, find what, um, what easy cheats your brain can remember and then roll with those. Um, but there we have. A railway crossing sign. Neat. Um, and just to make it look a little bit less blah, we'll uh, illuminate the cavity mapping. So that'll give it some 3D definition. Um, and that's probably all I'll activate. You know, that makes it so you can see the the nuts pretty easily. Now this is a two-sided sign, so it doesn't matter which side the nut is coming in from. Elsewhere, you will want to think about that. Um, in really tight clearances, uh, especially, for example, on locomotives, there will be places where the clearance is so tight that you can only rotate it from one side. And so you want to put the nut in from the difficult side and then you can just spin the the or you want to put the bolt in from the difficult side and then you want to you can spin the nut um or if you want it to look pretty you put the bolt in from the front and that way you don't see the nut 
Um, there's a few different ways to, to go about it. It depends on what you're building. Um, but it's something to think about no matter what. So we'll use my base material here. Um, these... These are primarily for railroads online, so I'm not going to keep the trains convention. Uh, if I was making these for trains, I would go dot m dot pbr metal, whatever, um, or you know m dot t bump text or whatever. If you're using legacy materials, I I get enough flack over wanting my game to look good that um, I. And becoming gradually more antagonistic towards um, legacy materials as time goes on. Because if people are going to give me grief for doing what looks good to me, then I am going to become antagonistic about it. Sorry. Um, we'll call this signs. And whenever I put it into... Actually, I'll put it lowercase signs. Um, and then whenever we put it, I put it into trains. If I put it into trains, it'll be sides.m.pbr metal. But, um, this way the railroads online people have a nice easy name, um, image texture railroads online can do 4k. I'm not going to do 4k on signs. I'm doing 4k on rolling stock and like major big things. Um, <laughs> So this will just be signs. Um, I'll make it 2K just so that um, it's always better to reduce than to have to blow it up later. Um, because you will want to blow it up later. You will, you know, if you have to redo everything to be higher resolution, you will want to make it explode. Um, so we're applying the edge split modifier that is um so that unwrapping everything i won't have to determine seams um you will have seen me do that once on the uh on the bolt shafts these red lines are the seams i have them I had them facing down, but I just realized that this is a first person simulator. And this is a 11 and a half foot tall sign, which means that the player is going to be looking up at it um, by quite a large margin. So I'm going to rotate these. I should have checked that before I edge split everything. I'm going to rotate these uh, 180 degrees so the seam is pointing up where the player is less likely to see them. Ideally, your seam won't be that visible anyway, especially if you're working in a um, in a, a 3D editor program like Substance. So we unwrap this and look at it. Just Is that how we want to use our space? No. Um, first things first, these came out a little warped. I pointed with my hand. Um, so we're going to project them from view. Project from view. This one's on the other side. Project from view. Um, there's nothing wrong with mirroring stuff if you're not going to put text on it. But you never know who is going to try to put text on it later. So make it easy to understand. Um, set us a decent margin. And, um, and this is just something that I do. Select all the, all the parts of the nut and the bolt and move it to a place that's, um, a little bit more out of the way. Uh, we'll repack them so that they're fancy. Uh, and also so that they're a little bit higher texel density than the rest of the sign. Because these are going to be worked on by wrenches. They're going to catch a little bit more wear than anything else. 
Um, they also just stick out from the sign. So they're going to catch a little bit more wear than anything else. And if you get that nice metal scratchy effect and it's not grainy, it'll look really good. Um, we don't need this entire sign to be 2K though. Um, but first I'm going to... I'm going to do a few quality of life things. I'm going to make sure everything um, is right side up that can be right side up. Um, these are the actual sign portion. I'm going to make those sideways, even though it will make my life interesting later. Um, it won't make it that much more interesting, fortunately, because substance is God mode. But um, in the traditional method, you would have to assign your materials. Okay, so that one's upside down. So we'll flip that over. Uh, in the traditional method, you'd have to assign your materials, you know, purely based on what you could see. And that would mean that um, you'd be really kicking yourself if things were just randomly not aligned with the grain. Um, but I have substance, so I don't care about that. Uh, we'll size this to half. We'll size this to half. This is the biggest, um, the biggest sign in the collection. And if we have that as our foundation, it should leave plenty of space for us to do everything else at a similar textile density. Um, textile density is how much, relatively how much of the texture space is occupied by the mesh. Um, and so a higher de textile density is going to equal more readability um, pretty much regardless. Um, it's different than pixels per inch, only in that pixels per inch relies on the dots per inch of the image, and textile density doesn't. It's completely, um, it's completely relative. So we're gonna go to ng trestle, scroll out from that. That's my Rio Grande folder because these are Rio Grande signs, signs. Especially when you're texturing, save often. Because if you, I mean, especially if you're doing something like this tutorial, where I'm building a sign, texturing it, building another sign, um, one undo button could erase all of your baking work and then you're in a world of hurt. Um, so you really don't want to, you don't want to be there. Um, how are we doing? 28 minutes. Uh, I'll do one more just for reasons. I don't know. Um, I'll do a station sign. We want this to be as centered as possible. Um, and we'll hide the railway crossing sign for the purpose of the bake. So we'll snap our cursor to the world origin. And since we don't have to recenter the sign this or the uh, drawing this time, um, we'll just look at where the center line is going to be. So overall, this is a 14 foot sign. So it's gonna be seven feet up from the bottom and it's four feet into the ground. So we're gonna set the cursor three feet high. Um, <laughs> and importantly, this is gonna be a little bit funny to work with because you can see there is a break in the diagram here. That's why the theoretical halfway point looks so far up the sign. Um, but we'll add a coop make it 10 inches on the side. Um, the dimensions of the starting cube really only matters in terms of what you want to work with. 
and um, so we'll name this station sign. And that said Q.001, which tells me that this isn't labeled. Always, always name your messes. It will make it so much easier because if you're doing something down the road and you say, oh, where was that beautiful? I mean, in this case, something, you know, completely easy to make. Where was that beautiful signpost that I wanted? Um, you'll know to look for Railroad Crossing because that's what it was from. Um, it doesn't matter as much with signs, but it'll be really, really, really good practice when you're building a locomotive and you're like, hey, I don't want to have to do a distributing valve again. That sucks. I'm just going to steal the distributing valve off of Rio Grande Western 70. Um, and that's an example from life because, fun fact, every locomotive that I've done with a distributing valve since I did Rio Grande Western 70 has had the distributing valve from Rio Grande Western 70. <laughs> um, so now that we're done with the signpost, we'll adjust it to... So the drawing lines up at the top um, and I'll adjust it to this higher up one because it doesn't matter. Really it's just there as a visual aid to make sure that you're being sane um, and we'll hide the railway crossing again. Um, and we'll also make sure that we're still perfectly on the origin. Um, you don't have to be perfectly on the origin of the object. I just think it's neat. Um, that's me. That's a little bit about myself. I like things to be easy. Um, especially because you never know when you might want to go back and animate something for no particular reason. Again, doesn't matter that much for a sign, but it matters a lot when you're building a locomotive. Um... So there's our peak, and similar to the railway crossing, this is going to be a really easy build overall because we just um, we look at the overall dimension of the sign, six inches down from the top, eighteen inches total. That means we're going to be want to be fifteen inches from the top. So our three D cursor is going to be at um, ten. Minus one and a quarter is eight and three quarter inches. And look, it's perfectly centered where we want it. Add a cube. Cube is 18 inches. Nope, that's 15 inches. 18 inches. Um, there you go. If you're not in the U.S. and get tripped up by stupid things all the time, you're not alone. I will absolutely type in 15 inches instead of 18 inches because I'm thinking a foot and a half. Um, and because despite my own rules, I uh, frequently think in terms of inches rather than feet and inches. Um, I didn't check how thick this is supposed to be. So how thick is this supposed to be? Does it... It doesn't say. Rude. Rude and uncouth. Um, this appears to be the same distance. It's one and three eighths. This is one and three eighths. I'm going to assume it, it should be one and three eighths. Um, one and three eighths. Also, eleven eighths. You'll sometimes see me just do the math in my head because engineering student and also you know born and raised yank I guess um, we could keep this all a fancy sign or we could make sure that everything is going to be perfectly lined up um, 
so we'll scoot that down. We moved it up nine inches. Um, you know, it was already really, really close, but as I said, I steal parts all the time. It pays dividends over and over and over again to make sure that your parts are, are reasonably proportioned. They don't have to be exactly right. You don't have to worry about getting every 32nd of an inch in place, um, especially because Blender will actively fight you on that constantly. It sucks. Um, and one of the things I'm looking at, especially here, um, and I've got a, um, I've got a photo reference of this over on the other screen. You can see there's kind of a chamfer around the edges. Um, and it's on the diagram too. It's not dimensioned out, but I am willing to bet that that's our, our, um, that's going to be either half the thickness of the sign or the leftover from the nearest round measurement. So it could be three eighths of an inch or it could be 11 sixteenths. Let's see. Three eighths, uh, bring this into compare again. I mean, look at it. That's not enough. Um, we'll go with 11 sixteenths or the nearest, um, the nearest like relatively round number is three quarters, three quarters. That looks a lot closer. So there we have our sign on one side, but of course, um, station signs are on both sides or as Western Pacific would call them non-agency signs. These are not just going to be at stations. Um, part of the reason I want to build these is that these are also going to be at any siding, um, any pertinent location, any water stop. They tell you where you are. Um, that's their entire purpose. And so we're then going to, we've got a couple more things to add. There's a lantern hook and there's the flag staff. Um, I'm not going to model a flag just because I have never seen it in use, <laughs> but, um, but it's important to, to have at least the bases because then if someone wants to add a flag, they can because you model it. Um, always, always, always pays dividends to, um, to just do things that make sense. <laughs> You're doing yourself a massive favor if everything that you do makes some kind of mechanical or at least logical sense. Um, and you can't always do that. Okay, uh, it doesn't specify the type of bolts there, but again, this calls five eighths, um, that calls five eighths, that calls five eighths. It's pretty clear the standard bolt for this type of sign is five eighth, so I'm going to use a five eighth bolt. Um, and if I was really lazy, I could just copy it from the. Um, from the railway crossing sign, but this is a tutorial, so I'll do it properly. Um, and again, this is a double-sided sign. It doesn't really matter uh, which side the, the bolt tail sticks out of. Um, push it up half an inch from center because the overall dimension between them is 12 inches. Um, go into your top view, and then Go out half an inch. Um, this sign, the top of the sign is 10 feet off the ground. 10 feet minus a foot and a half is still eight and a half feet, which means you're going to be looking up at this sign. So we're going to put the, we're going to edge split this guy. Hello. Um, now you'll see an issue here. This bolt has eight sides to it, 
which means I need to be at least 45 degrees in order for it to be smooth. However, that's also a 45 degree chamfer. So if I make the chamfer not smooth, bolt's not smooth. There's two solutions to this, depending on what you're modeling for. If you're modeling for like a 3D print, um, it's wood, the chamfer isn't going to be exactly perfect. Also, if you're modeling for a 3D print, your smoothing doesn't matter. Um, but if you wanted to, you could round this corner off. You could add very slight chamfers at the edge, or very slight fillets at the edge of the chamfer. Um, that would help it look a lot more like the physical part. However, um, let's go and pull up my statistics. This station sign is only 102 triangles, and we want to keep it that way. Because I don't know how many sightings you want as a Railroads Online player. But you should have at least one of these signs at every sighting. And those polys add up. Especially if I'm trying to, you know... <laughs> um, if I'm trying to, you know, force feed your, your poor, poor game... You know, 150,000 polys for the locomotive portion of the Glenbrook. Um, you don't want to also be having to deal with my, my insane poly counts on signs. So, I'm not going to give my signs in St. Paul accounts. Um, I'm going to keep them as reasonable as I possibly can so that I can go more ham on the locomotives. Um, because that's what you're interacting with in this game, is the locomotives. If we were working with something like Fallout, I would put a lot more detail into the sign because signs are going to be everywhere and locomotives are not. Um, in Railroads Online, the locomotives are going to be everywhere. We have two options to deal with this, this uh, problematic smoothing I mentioned earlier. The uh, easy option, since we're done with the sign basically, is just to flat face it. And that's what I'm going to do in this case, is flat face it. Alternatively, you could um, do what's called marking sharp. What that means, uh, you'll see sharp edges in the modifier here. A sharp edge means that regardless of angle, you can command it to split with an edge split. Um, or with auto smoothing. I know a lot of people use auto smoothing. Um, I'm aware it's probably just me, but... Um, Every instance I have worked with auto smoothing in the past was because either I or someone I work with was trying to work with a model that happened to have auto smoothing. I'm just randomly rotating these bolts a little bit to give it variety. Um, Any time that that we were working with something that you know the original author put auto smoothing on, or that we accidentally put auto smoothing on. It results in some kind of nonsense going down. Um, now, I also know a lot of very good modelers who swear by auto smoothing. So, I'm aware that the problem is most likely with me. Um, that's where I'm coming from. Um, I don't use auto smoothing. It's not part of my workflow. I don't know how to use it. I would be worse off if I tried. Um, but if you use it, great. Save yourself the work, man. Um, or, you know, whomever. Um, I'm rebaking this since I rotated the bolts on it. Um, I was going to show you what it would have looked like, but it baked too fast. Uh, I'm too used to my 4K textures with my 0 .001 noise threshold <laughs> and baking for just hours. Um, the boxcar for Railroads Online, the main body of that, 
took me about two and a half hours to bake in Blender. Substance would have been faster, but I couldn't isolate the doors and everything else that I wanted to isolate. So, um, well, I, I could, it would just be annoying to me. Um, again, if you do it, great. Um, I'm not knocking you. I know a lot of very good modelers who do. Um, I don't really have a good reference for this, uh, for this needle thing. I, you know, I, I'm fairly sure I've seen the part before. It's just a hook. Um, but like, I don't know if it should be, you know, chamfered at the edge or whatever. Uh, what I'm going to do is just, um, do something a little bit different just to teach a little bit wider variety of, uh, of stuff in this tutorial. Um, so that's going to be one to be zero. That's going to be one to be eight foot one inch. Um, even though this position is kind of arbitrary and it would be arbitrary, you're just screwing this hook directly into the sign. Um, it, it's still easy, you know, nice and neat to have round numbers. I always prefer to have round numbers. Um, we're working on a fine scale, so we'll set the, the starting um, Bezier curve radius to an inch instead of a foot, and we'll move that to our station sign collection. Um, so the way that this object works, the way that Bezier curves work, is uh, a bit like the path tool or the pen tool rather in um, GIMP or Photoshop. You have these um, points that you can manipulate that also define how the line connecting them is going to bend. Um, and you just move them around. Um, so we're going to start by angling it to be perpendicular with this. That's going to be about a 30 degree angle. Um, probably not exactly, but the magic of 30 degrees is that sine of 30 degrees is a half. So, you know, the total, um, the total distance between this, these two points is two inches, which means that the total vertical distance is one inch. That's a really, really handy figure. Um, I'm, I apologize to every artistic person watching this whose brain is just shutting down the minute I mention math. Um, embrace trigonometry. Embrace it. It will, it will help your life so much. I can never remember the snapping rules for this. It looks like I activated them somehow. Um, but not in the way I would like. What did I hit? I hit control, I think. I didn't hit control. Um... Oh, I see. You have to hold control to get freedom. Um, you can see this still has vertex coordinates. I'm just going to set it to 3 eighths because that's what, nope, 3 eighths of an inch, not 3 eighths of a foot. Um, for you following along at home, 3 eighths of a foot is 4 and a half inches. Useful. And uh, we're going to set this down to a quarter of an inch. This one is going to be trickier because it's at an angle. And even though the Z is going to be half of the overall dimension, the overall dimension isn't a neat figure right now. So we're going to rotate this back 60 degrees. And we're going to set it to a quarter of an inch. And we're going to set this one to a quarter of an inch as well for good measure. 
Um, now look at how nice that curve looks. Some real uh, uh, you know, minis word level, big brain type um, route geometry. So we'll extend this a little bit into the sign um, because it would be tangent at the very end. And the best way to mimic that is by making it tangent. Um, tangent, of course, is another word for perfectly linear. Um, you'll see it all the time in railroading contexts. So um, learn it. Ingest it. Get used to it. Um, it will make your life easier. Um, so we're going to want to have a little bit of a, a straightaway here. And then we're going to want to have a little bit of an extension over here. And I'm not going to put an intermediary point um, anywhere along there. I'm just going to bring it straight across because that's going to make my life easier. And I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Um, and then I'm going to extend out the hook. That's going to be three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to adjust this. Bring that down half an inch. Um, bring this out by an eighth of an inch and let's see that's still not working quite right um, so I think we'll bring this up by a quarter of an inch and bring this down by a quarter of an inch Uh, and let's do 60 degrees and let's move this in an eighth, not an eighth of a foot, uh, one and a half inches for those playing along at home. Um, that's still not quite the profile I want. So I'm going to rotate this back and then I'm going to shorten this a little bit, quarter of an inch. Uh, let's try 75 degrees and then we'll want this to be 10 degrees. Um, what that's going to do uh, so this is 3 eighths of an inch. What we can do is we can It's going to play rough with me. So instead, I can just go 50 degrees, quarter of an inch, 50 degrees, nope, negative 50 degrees. And then move it a little bit. Um, I'm starting to break my own rules, but you can kind of see why. Um, we're just trying to make the hook look reasonable at this point. Um, so there we have our path. Now how does this help us, you might ask. Our triangle count hasn't got up at all. We haven't actually added any geometry here. Well, we can go to the shape. We can go to geometry. Um, bevel, I think. Eighth of an inch. That caused some weirdness on the end, but whatever. Um, now you can see it added a lot of polys. We're going to take the resolution down um, just a bit. 
make it six on the side. That's a lot less polys. Still kind of too many polys though. Uh, cut this resolution down to four. Three? Mm, four. And then we'll have to do some manual cleanup, but there's our hook. So the way we use this is we can go object, uh, convert to mesh. Um, there used to be a keyboard shortcut for this. Um, it's It used to be, I think, Alt-C. However, it doesn't work for me anymore. Uh, I don't know if that's because um, Blender has a, you know, a mean, mean, ferocious hatred towards the concept of Dorak keyboard, which I use, um, or if they simply removed it. Impossible for me to know because Dvorak just, you lose some, uh, some shortcuts sometimes. So we made our, our nice little pointed end and there's our hook. Now, of course it's not screwed in, into anything. So we'll move it up here to where it is. That's one and three quarters of an inch uh, or two inches. Um, nah, one and seven eighths, which is going to be 15 eighths there. Now to mirror it, 15 fourths, perfect. Um, and we'll put the seam along this, select loops. Um, I've seen people use a keystroke for select loops. It's not advertised on the thing, so I don't know what it is, so I don't use it. Um, as I said, I don't use keystrokes as much as a lot of people do. Um, I'm aware that it would speed up my uh, workflow, but everyone I have interacted with seems to think that I am some kind of demon. Um, so I don't think I need to speed up my workflow. And we'll simplify the geometry just to save even more polys because, you know, this tiny little hook is still a significant chunk of our sign poly count. Um, and we're going to add an edge split to this hook. We're not going to join it to the sign because that would require messing with the, um, uh, actually I'm only using the, the sign for one purpose. Okay. Yeah. We'll join it to the sign. Um, you'll see joining it to the sign has made it all nonsense so we have to increase our angle limit to uh, accommodate six-sided um, figures that would cause a problem if we're using hex bolts but we're not because very few people were in this day and age Um, so I've sharped the end, so it'll look a little bit like a chamfered end. Um, there's not a great way to make, way to make it look like a point. I don't think it that matters that much. Um, so then the last thing we need to do before we can map this and call it a day, because I'm approaching an hour, is, um... add this flag stand um, and it's not dimensioned at all but you have to be clever with diagrams that looks to me like a square we know that this dimension is three inches Therefore, we'll assume that the flag stand is three by three. 
Um, and it's also a little bit above center. Um, but I'm going to build it at center and then move it up. It doesn't seem to protrude at all. So we'll do two and a half inches in to get it behind the edge of the sign. And then this is a three inch cube. So um, six inches gives us a nice nine inch um, even measurement. We'll delete these because you won't be able to see them. And then we're going to add the actual cylinder of the, um, you know, the, the flagstaff um, slot. Uh, there we go. That'll give us two and a half inches in the end. Um, because that's how much I moved it in. So we'll faces boolean. So now we have a little hole. That's probably a little bit too small of a hole. Um, so I'll add the same cylinder over again because that's what you do when in Blender. Do as the Blender artists do. Uh, five eighths. That's a nice even standard with our bolt, but um, you have to easily be able to get this in. Um, so the bigger, the better. Don't take that out of context. I know you're going to anyway, but, but don't do it. Um, and again, this is going to be above the user's head, you know, maybe unless you're Brett. Um, no, at, at this height, Brett's not eight foot nine. Um, uh, looks like about an eight degree incline and we'll move it up three quarters of an inch and that causes it to stay out a little bit. So we'll move it in another, well, we'll, we'll, Move it in unrotated. Keep your workflow simple. Um, rotate it back. Move it up three quarters of an inch. And there we have our flag stand. So if you wanted to put a flag in there, slot it right in. Uh, it doesn't say what types of flag would be used here. Um, I would assume just, you know, your standard railway flags, red, white, green. Um, you'd have to refer to the, um, the signal rules for the railroad you're running. Um, different colors, of course, mean different things. Um, different colors in different positions frequently mean different things. So you'll notice something here. It's assigned the entire height of the signpost completely round because of how nice and geometric everything is. So first we have to... Um, we have to shade this flat so that it won't look weird. Um, we also will want to mark this top sharp because what I'm about to do is just take this and eat. And as soon as the island is broken, um, the calf will end. Um, that That's a drawfee reference. Um, don't worry about it. Now you can see the signs that we actually want to write on look a little funky. We don't really want to deal with that either. Um, so what I'm going to do is keep the chamfers attached, but I'm just going to project them from view. Uh, I'm projecting both from view because they're symmetrical. 
and because they might want to have writing on them, I'm going to mirror one on the x-axis. But that way, you write on one, the writing appears in the correct position on both. Nifty. Um, this is five feet, which means it's going to want to be half of this 10 foot railway crossing sign. Keep our textile density uniform. Um, now you're also going to see this is not ideal. So we'll split these sides away. Um, we could have just split all those faces off using, you know, mark sharp and would have avoided what I just did. Listen, it's getting late. <laughs> I never claimed to be a functional human being. Only a functional 3D modeler. Um, but splitting them off, I thought I, oh, it, right, it's because I only separated it on the island. So re-unwrapping it undid that nifty thing that I showed you. But if you don't have to unwrap it, that does work. <laughs> if you do have to unwrap it, you have to split it off using Y in case you missed the command. Um, both of these are upside down too, so we'll correct that. And these are not going to be in line with the grain. Correct it. Uh, no, those are the flagstaff. Those are metal. Perfect. Now, same process. In this case, I'm just going to deselect all the wood bits because they're bigger. And um, then move the metal bits off to one side. Uh, repack the wood pit bits without allowing it to... Uh, to rotate back and annoy me um, and we can scale the textile density on these off of the sign uh, there there are a lot of plugins that you can use to either lay down uniform textile density um, or check your textile density, or even just map things automatically. Um, I want to pick up one of the textile density checkers at some point. I'm just, um, as I said, not a functional human being. Um, I do not recommend any program that maps your stuff automatically. Um, call me old fashioned. You know, I I did learn all this by by doing all my texturing by hand, so I'm I'm used to having to deal with the consequences of my mapping. Um, but the thing is, no matter what you do, there is going to be someone who wants to improve your texture work and they are going to be working with your mapping frequently by hand. Make their life easier. Do it. Do it. Um, see this grain? This is why my bakes take a long time because I don't like that grain. So I reduce the noise threshold by a factor of 10 and bake it again and it'll take way longer, but it'll look good as hell. Um, with that bake going on though, um, this is all for this tutorial. Um, I'm basically gonna gonna um, model the rest of these signs and then and then start another one um, on texturing them in Substance Painter. So see you then. <laughs>